Today I want to talk a little bit about how I shoot and grade footage from the Sony a7 Mark III, specifically in this shot right here, but this also carries over to pretty much any other camera system, Sony, Fujifilm, whatever, Canon, it doesn't matter, and pretty much any type of shot. It's a simple way to get accurate colors and even match multiple cameras. So let's get into it. Hey, what's up? I'm Scott and welcome to my channel. And if you're new here, make sure to subscribe for more no-nonsense reviews and tutorials. So we'll jump right in and the first thing that I do before shooting, absolutely any time that it's physically possible, is to set a custom white balance. And I use this color checker white balance card from X-Rite. Also, I am shooting in a customized Cine 4 profile, but that's more or less irrelevant and this process will work with any profile. To set a custom white balance with Sony, just go into the custom white balance options. You have a few, choose set and then place your little square right over this card here with this card being placed right into whatever light source you may be using, your key light. With Canon, you usually have to take a photo of the card close up and then set the white balance from that from within the menu. And with other brands, I'm not really sure of all the details, Panasonic, I believe, is very similar to Sony, but it has been a while since I've used a Panasonic camera. Now, I shoot alone here, so I just clip this right into this little tabletop mic stand that I had lying around, and I place it usually right where my face would be right here, and that's it. You should probably get your exposure set first, too, and I use this same white balance card most of the time. I have my zebras in camera set to 65 plus or minus 5, and I aim for that exposure on the card. I've tried a few stops over and under and that seemed to be the best balance of dynamic range and a clean image in this particular profile for me. This will differ from camera to camera, profile to profile, and you can do your own experiments of course. And if you are using a gray card instead of a white balance card like this is, the exposure level may differ yet again. You could also judge this based on skin tones, which I usually try to put right around the same 65 plus or minus 5 exposure as this white balance card. But again, this will really depend on your camera and your profile, so do experiment a little bit to find the best exposure for you. So with my white balance and exposure set, I don't need to touch this anymore because this shot is always the same. The next step though is even more important, and that's to get a clip holding the color checker passport that I have here, and this is also from X-Rite. This will let you grade the footage to an accurate image, even if your white balance is a little bit off and regardless of what camera you use. Now, there are programs and tools to automatically correct your image based off of this chart, but I don't like them and I hardly got good results with them when I did try, so we're gonna do this manually. Also, this is the video version of the Color Checker Passport, and I do also have the photo version lying around somewhere, and the color chips are slightly different on it. Uh, and there are different charts like this as well, but you can get the basic idea of what we're doing here, and it's gonna be the same with other charts as well. So, we take our shot into Final Cut Pro, but again, this should essentially be the same process, just with slightly different tools in any other editor. If you're shooting in log, you should apply your log to Rec. 709 LUT first and I'm not shooting in log here. So what I do first is just go in and crop the image to show only this part of the color checker and then turn on the vector scope and I boost up the overall saturation so that things are a little bit easier to see. From there, I go into the hue versus hue curves and I use the color picker to select the color of these color chips on the top row. You can see that as I do that, it creates points on either side of the color. So I'm gonna select and delete those so that we only have points on the target colors. This here is the most time consuming part of the process, but it does get faster every time you do it. Once we have all of those selected, you want to drag them up or down one by one to move the hue towards the target boxes on the vector scope. And once you're finished, just check out that skin tones are also lined up with the skin tone line on that vector scope. If they are, we're set to move on. And if they're not, you can also select the skin tone patch in the same way and tweak it just as you need. Once that's all set, we will deal with saturation and depending on how things look, you could do this in either an overall saturation adjustment or a color by color adjustment. But either way, first we're gonna delete that saturation boost that we did before. These color chips should be at 50% saturation and in Final Cut, you have to eyeball it. But some programs will have a line on the vector scope that shows you exactly where that level of saturation is and you can use that, it's a lot easier. 
An overall saturation boost is simple, but if you want to adjust individual colors, it's exactly the same process as before, except now we're using the hue versus saturation curves. Dial each one up or down as you need and you're good to go. The final step is your black point and your white point. For this, I switch back to the waveform and I use either the color wheels or the color chart to adjust the exposure of the black and white point to where I want it, again, judging based on the waveform. And from here on out, you could of course grade this stylistically, but this is my process for getting a basic but accurate grade or a standardized grade to match footage from multiple different cameras. So I hope that was helpful and check out the video description for links to the white balance card and the color checker passport that I use here. Otherwise, let me know if you have any questions or comments and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, all that good stuff, and I'll see you next time.